Hello everyone, today is 6th August 2020 and myself Dr. Ankur Gupta again from regularcrisis.com. We are in the mid of COVID pandemic and I hope all of you are doing fine. So today we will be discussing a very common question among medical students. What are the differences between different carbapenems? Carbapenems are one of the most commonly used antibiotics in the intensive care unit and ER and today's session is made specially on the request of Dr. Benjamin and Dr. Harsh who works in the intensive care unit in Indore, India. Now before we moving on, let's have a brief idea about carbapenems. Carbapenem uh, belongs to the group of antibiotics uh, called beta-lectins. In beta-lectins we have four major groups, penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems and monovectums. So carbapenems comes under the beta-lectins and all the beta-lectins acts by uh, killing the bacteria through lysis of the cell wall. So, that kills the bacteria by acting on the cell wall. Now, all beta-lectin antibiotics have this four-membered ring structure. One, two, three, four. In carbapenems, this four-membered ring structure is att attached to a five-member ring. And in this, on this five-membered ring, we have R1 group and R2 groups. Basically, R1 and R2 are different molecules, different compounds attached to this five-membered uh, ring. And the difference in the properties of, or the difference in the molecule uh, groups, R1 and R2 gives different properties to the different carbapenems used. Let's see. In carbapenems, we have four antibiotics, imipenem, silastatin, meropenem, Doripenem and Artapenem. These are the only four carbapenems available. Now, as you can see, this is the structure of the carbapenem and in imipenem, you don't have R1 group. Means imipenem only comes with the R2 groups. That means there is no group attached in place of R1. Only the uh, antibiotic has only R2 molecule attached. Therefore, this imipenem is destroyed in the kidney by an enzyme called dihydropeptidase. dihydropeptidase and therefore it has it needs to be combined with an enzyme inhibitor called silastatin so silastatin prevents the imipenem from getting destroyed by the renal enzyme so uh, imipenem doesn't have an r1 group only r2 group meropenem doripenem artapenem all these have r1 and r2 and the r1 is usually the same in this methyl group methyl group only the difference in the r2 uh, member r2 molecule r2 compound the properties of meropenem, doripenem and artapenem differ. Now the common things uh, among uh, all carbapenems, they are active against most of the gram positive, most of the gram negative and most of the anaerobe organisms but they are not active against atypical one. Why not uh, active against atypical? Because carbapenems act by acting on the cell wall and atypical organism don't have a cell wall. So there is no target to act on. So therefore, most of the carbapenems are inactive against uh, atypical bugs, but they are active against gram positive, gram negative and anaerobes. Now coming to the differences. Now imipenem, silastatin, imipenem was the first carbapenem which was discovered. It has a very broad spectrum of activity against uh, gram positive, negative and anaerobes. But the problem with imipenem is it has the highest, highest potential for causing seizures. So if you have a patient who is um, having some CNS problems or known epileptic or meningitis or the patient is having renal failure, so using imipenem poses the patients at high risk of causing seizures. Meropenem. Meropenem has same spectrum activity as that of imipenem. Same spectrum, same spectrum of activity as uh, imipenem but the chances of seizures with meropenem is less compared to that of imipenem. So that's why meropenem is a better choice as compared to imipenem if you are uh, more concerned about the seizures in that particular patient. Doripenem again more or less similar activity as of meropenem or uh, imipenem but the uh, one good thing about doripenem is lower rate of resistance when you talk about pseudomonas arginosa. So if you have pseudomonas arginosa in a patient who is causing, which is causing the sepsis and you have a resistance to imipenem or meropenem, there are chances that doripenem may act on that particular patient. And beside this, least risk of seizures 
is present with doripenem among all the caropenems seizure uh, risk is least with doripenem but in studies in studies and in some trials it has been observed that when they started doripenem as an empirical therapy um, the mortality rates were little bit higher little bit higher in those patients so doripenem is usually not uh, started as an empirical drug in septic, septic patients but specifically if you are dealing with pseudomonas if your uh, bug is resistant to meropenem or imipenem you can try doripenem in those patients especially now coming to ertapenem ertapenem's spectrum of activity differs it is less active against gram positive uh, bacteria less active against pseudomonas arginosa and less active against acinetobacter so therefore its spectrum activity is weaker as compared to other three uh, carbapenems but the benefit which, com which comes with ertapenem it requires only once per day dosing only once so imipenem meropenem doripenem needs to be given either 6 hourly or 8 hourly while ertapenem needs to be given only once so a patient who is in the ward or the patient who is at home care you need to uh, give iv antibiotics then ertapenem can become a good choice so when you combine all these uh, all these imipenem high risk of seizures menopenem same activity but less seizure doripenem more potent against slightly more potent against pseudomonas arginosa but not not a good choice uh, for empirical drug ertapenem less spectrum of activity but once a dosing that's why when we combine all this meropenem uh, is the drug of choice as an empirical drugs which is being used so widely in the emergency units and intensive care units so i hope this brief session must have helped you a, a little bit if you have queries you can uh, post in the comment section you can also go on to regularcrisis.com and post on the forums or you can simply write us on we learn at regularcrisis.com thank you for watching please subscribe the channel for similar videos similar sessions we hope our videos are helping the students medical students who are working in the er and icu thank you stay safe in this covid pandemic <laughs>